Hello there from, it is Toby from TIJ Music and today I'm going to be reviewing another album and today it is the turn of this, News of the World by Queen. Now, I'm very lucky to actually have a physical copy of this album. It's very rare I have physical copies of albums. I, I tend to just uh, listen to albums digitally, but I do tend to buy uh, the odd album by CD. Not particularly vinyl. This is actually my dad's vinyl. Uh, very lucky to be able to borrow this vinyl today. I've borrowed a few of my dad's vinyls and I've also borrowed the uh, album that came before this, A Day at the Race. Again, a brilliant album. Uh, and of course, this is News of the World. So released in 1977 when punk group uh, music was getting really bigger. I have to say, I really like the album cover to this. Uh, whenever I think of Queen, uh, which is a band I really like, as you can see, I've got ACDC here. So ACDC are probably my favourite band, maybe Pink Floyd as well. Uh, in terms of rock band, but Queen are definitely up there, 100%. And when I think of Queen, the first thing I always think of uh, is this brilliant album cover. So just to talk about the album cover a little bit before we get into the music. Uh, it was actually a design that had been, it's been changed obviously because it's got the four band members on, but it was from a 1953 science fiction magazine that the drummer in the band, Roger Taylor, I'm just going to look at my notes, it is from... Uh, Astounding Science Fiction from October 1953 by American sci-fi artist Frank Kelly Frias. And basically the band approached Frias, or Frias, I'm not really sure uh, how you pronounce his name, and said, you know, can we use this cover? And uh, he said, yeah. So it was adapted uh, to have the band members on the cover. So we've got, who have we got? I think we've got Brian May on the top. We've got Freddie uh, in the middle. Uh, and we've got John Deacon on the bottom. But as you open uh, the cover and unveil the back of the cover, I'm not going to open it fully. Uh, but there is Roger Taylor on the back of the cover with the songs on the back of the cover in as well and uh, it's a really nice vinyl uh, I really like it as you open it up uh, you get a really nice picture which you can see there just trying to make the record not fall out uh, as we go but really nice album art and uh, it looks like a cracking album I think it's definitely uh, highlighting Queen's career in terms of the album cover we're not quite talking about the music yet I'm going to talk about the music in a little while but in terms of the album cover it is one that uh, I really like. But as I said earlier, it's uh, a time in Queen's career where things had to be stripped down a little bit after a day in the races. People said that it was a little bit of a boring album, the day at the race. So I, I, I don't know if I agree with that so much. There's some brilliant songs on there. Tie Your Mother Down, Good Old Fashioned Lover Boy, uh, Somebody to Love. I'm only listing the songs I've listened to off that album. Because admittedly, this is the only Queen album that I've listened to in full. And it's the only Queen album that I've listened to in full today. Uh, before today, I'd only listened to five of the tracks. I'd, of course, listened to the title two, We Will Rock You and We Are The Champions, as well as Sheer Heart Attack, uh, Spread Your Wings and Get Down My Love. And the other six, there's 11 songs on the album, so of course it's got to be six. Uh, the other six I've listened to in full for the first time today. Uh, and I've listened to them a few times. I'm going to try and assess uh, this album. Now, personally, just a few feelings before we get into it song by song. Uh, there are a few people that say this album is fantastic. You know, it's, it's the highlight of Queen's career and it's probably the best one. Uh, I don't know what to say to that, really. I, there's some crackers. There's, there are some brilliant cracking tracks on this album. But whether it's um, got it as an album as a whole, there's a few weak points, I think, honestly. It, it's not um, fantastic as a full album, I would say. I think there's possibly in the album maybe seven or eight really good tracks, but there are two or three tracks that aren't so good and that let it down a little bit for me. So as I said before, this is a bit of a stripped back album by Queen. It comes after the day in the races, uh, and it's definitely Queen's last hard rock album before we move into jazz, the game, Flash Gordon, that 80s period that, I have to say, I think was really a wrong move uh, for Queen. I mean, you know, the 80s brought along such an amount of singles for Queen. I'm thinking in terms of the Works album with Radio Gaga. Uh, we've got the Kind of Magic album, of course, that came after that, Kind of Magic, One Vision, uh, Friends Will Be Friends, all these songs. Uh, and about to bike starting outside, fantastic. But the 80s really brought a lot of singles for Queen, but I think, honestly, their prime period and the period I look back on um, with the most Queen songs that I like is between the 73 period when they had the first debut album uh, and 77 when this album came out. And although I haven't listened to any other album of Queen's uh, in full, I have listened to the majority of the albums kind of in spats, like the first album I've listened to about seven out of a, a seven out, seven out of ten of the tracks, uh, and all the other albums I've listened to a fair amount, but News of the World, as I said, it's the first time I've listened to that today. So in terms of album performance, there were three singles that came with this album, depending on where you were uh, and located when the album came out. The first single, of course, was We Are The Champions, track two? Yeah, track two on the track, yeah. 
Uh, track two on the album, We Are The Champions. Yeah, it is track two. I'll just check it, it is track two. Uh, we Are The Champions was a single. Amazingly, We Will Rock You was never a single. It was the B-side of We Are The Champions. And even more amazingly, We Are The Champions never got to number one. It was denied by The Name Of The Game by ABBA. Uh, it was denied by Mull of Kintyre by Wings, which I think, and I might be wrong about this, but I think I heard that Mull of Kintyre was massive in terms of it was the biggest selling single until kind of the Live Aid singles and the singles that came out. That was absolutely bonkers. Uh, and it was also when it came into the charts at number six in its second week, uh, at number two was Yes Sir I Can Boogie by Bacara. So you can kind of see what sort of music it is uh, up against. But it entered the top 40 at number 13, rose to number two. This, of course, we're talking uh, in the UK, al UK album charts, uh, UK singles charts, sorry, but never actually got to number one, which I think is a bit of a crime. It's definitely one of the best songs of all time. Then the other single in Britain was uh, Spread Your Wings with the B-side of Sheer Heart Attack. Again, two brilliant songs. Uh, and I think this got to about sort of 30s or 40s, nothing really special. Uh, and then if you were in the US, Canada, New Zealand or Japan, uh, the single that replaced Spread Your Wings was It's Late, which is the ninth track. No, the tenth track, sorry, uh, on the album just before the finale, which is My Melancholy Blues. Uh, and on the B-side of that was, again, Sheer Heart Attack. And then the album itself, it got to number four in the UK album charts. As I said, punk was becoming uh, something that was really big at the time. And this wasn't a punk rock album. This was a uh, classic Queen, and it represented a good move for Queen, this did, really. It was stripped back, but that was the intention of the band. They said that after um, Night at the Opera and the Day at the Race, they wanted to go for something a bit more stripped back. So this really fits um, both consumer needs and uh, the band's needs really well. So... That's fair play to them, but funnily enough, it was uh, the Sex Pistols that got to number one. We've, uh, I'll have to apologise in advance for any uh, of you that are offended by swearing, but I'm just getting on with it. Uh, with their band Nevermind the Bollocks, here's the Sex Pistols, and uh, that's a classic album in its own right. I'll maybe try and review that one month, one day uh, without trying to uh, swear every time I mention the, the album name. That might be a little bit tricky, but uh, funnily enough, the last bit of background, I know I'm waffling here, I do like waffling these, but uh, last bit of background is that uh, Queen and Sex Pistols are both recording their respective albums at the same time at the Sam West and Wessex Studios. And uh, Sid Vicious had a few uh, altercations, let's say, with Freddie Mercury. And uh, the funny one is uh, when Sid Vicious says to Freddie and he's on about, uh, so have you brought ballet to the masses yet? And uh, Freddie said, yeah, we're, we're trying our best. Uh, but really, of course, it was in the all-time rankings, even though the Sex Pistols won the battle. Queen definitely won the war in the end. Queen... Uh, one of the best uh, one of the best bands of all time with plenty of albums. The Sex Pistols they fizzled away pretty quickly. So finally onto the music. Yep, finally onto the music. I'm going to open the vinyl for this and get the uh, lyric sheet out so you can see that in all uh, all of its glory. But uh, the first track on the album is We All Rock You. As I said before, it was the uh, B side to the uh, the single We Are the Champions. I really like this uh, art inside as well. I'm going to chuck the cover for a minute, and uh, as you can see, we've got. Uh, the lyric sheet on the side with the uh, A side of the vinyl in the middle and I'll get the vinyl out in just uh, a minute. But the first song was Re We Will Rock You by uh, Brian May who wrote this and uh, yeah it's 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 a type of arena rock that's what uh, the genre is specified as and We Will Rock You again it's a classic and it's uh, it, it's kind of linked to sports in terms of it's played at many venues and all that sort of thing and it's really a timeless classic. Uh, and definitely one of the main Queen anthems, and yeah, it's a classic. You know, there's not really much to talk about about We Will Rock You. Uh, I think you you'll be hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't know the song. And uh, I think the second song is probably better than We Will Rock You in terms of um, its meaning and, and all that sort of thing. And it's just a better song. I, I do like We Will Rock You, but I think We Are the Champions is just well fantastic. There's there's no other way about it. So I've paid my dues time after time. I've done my sentence but committed no crime and those lyrics are really sort of you know poetry almost you know the we were rocky was the more rocky song funnily enough uh amazing it wasn't in rocky they were rather than either tiger my survivor there you go but uh we're the champions yeah it's uh it's an absolute classic uh written and penned by uh, freddie mercury and of course uh, freddie on lead vocals much like will rock you but it's just an absolute classic it's it's a timeless classic and you know it, I couldn't think of any better way to really start the album. So then we go into Sheer Heart Attack, which was written by Roger Tallon. I'm just going to consult... Oh, it's, it's all the way over there. I can't bother now. Um, I was just going to pick up the Sheer Heart Attack vinyl and show you that. Not not the single, the uh, album that was released by the band in 1975, the third album. 
And this song was actually ready by uh, 1974. It was pretty much written, half written by 1974, but it hadn't quite got everything quite ready. It was kind of like a half-finished song. And by 1977, uh, Roger really wants to get this one on the album. And it was um, a song that uh, Roger Taylor first uh, did vocals on, but that was uh, put to Freddie in the end in terms of lead vocals. Just check my notes. I don't know if I've got anything about uh, She Has. Like, yeah, it's more of a punk rock song and probably why... Uh, I really like it. And again, it, it really starts the album well. And uh, after We Were Rocky and We Are The Champions, I think, oh, here we go. We're getting into proper sort of proper rocky stuff now um, with, uh, you know, the the guitars and all that sort of stuff. And uh, again, it, it's really good lyrically. Yeah, I think that's a real quality that Queen have always had. They've, they've had really good uh, lyrics, whether they've been catchy with the stuff in the 80s and, of course, We Were Rocky. Um, or, you know, it's just quite meaningful and good. And... Uh, well, you're just 17 and all you want to do is disappear. And I think that's a brilliant uh, brilliant first line. Hey, 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 it was the DNA. Do you know, do you know, do you know just how I feel? It's just uh, the repetitiveness of those lyrics. I know it's uh, something that I feel a bit annoyed about today with the repetitiveness of lyrics in uh, modern stuff, you know, with uh, all the songs kind of like five lines repeated all the time. I know that's a very much stereotype and uh, generalisation. But for some things, it is true. But Sheer Heart's Attack, definitely one of my favourites off the album. Uh, but then we come to All Dead, All Dead. And uh, I think from side one, it's probably the weakest, personally. Uh, it's not a bad song. Uh, this one, again, penned by Brian May. And uh, again, it's not too bad. It's uh, It hasn't quite got the... And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a good pun here. Pardon me. It hasn't quite got the jazz of uh, the first three songs. I think that deserves a line, to be honest. But... Uh, Hasn't quite got the jazz of the first three songs. It's a good song, you know. It's it's a good album track, but I think it's probably a good album track at best. I think it's a, a good song with uh, Brian and Freddie on vocals, uh, but I don't know. I, I I don't think it's that fantastic as a song. But the next one, "Spread Your Wings," uh, is absolutely fantastic. The next two songs round outside one really nicely: "Spread Your Wings" and "Fight from the Inside." Uh, Spread Your Wings, uh, first, so uh, first song on the album to be written by John Deacon, the uh, the bass player for Queen. Uh, again, really good song, really good lyrically, uh, and quite inspirational, I'd say. It's it's a song that I've listened to before. Uh, again, uh, We Will Rock You, Champions, She Heart Attack, Spread Your Wings, and Get Down My Glove, the songs I've listened to before today. Uh, Spread Your Wings, it's just quite an inspirational song, you know, all about Sammy was low, just watching the show. Um... Since he was small, had no luck at all. Nothing came easy to him. Uh, and it's basically spread your wings and fly away and basically achieve what you want to and uh, and uh, and you're free to do whatever you want. And it's a really good song by John Deacon and I think it's a timeless classic again by Queen. Uh, like, you know, there's plenty of timeless classics by Queen, but again, a really good song. And then that's followed by Fight From The Inside and that's one I hadn't heard till, from till today. And it's one I've, I'm really glad I've heard now because it is, it, I think it's brilliant. Um, again, another another more rocky song written by Roger Taylor. You can see a bit of a theme uh, going on here. Um, apparently, it was quite interesting. I've, se uh, I've seen this uh, fact that uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses uh, recites the gar gu the gar riff the gar riff. Interesting. The guitar riff from this sing uh, from this track has been one of the best of all time, and I really do like it. I've only listened to it a few times, but I'm sure it's a song that I'm going to really sort of binge listen to. Because uh, I think it's brilliant. I think it's uh, it's really kind of aggressive, a little bit like sheer heart attack, and it's that sort of music I like. And maybe I might prefer um, the Sex Pistols album that went number one at that time. Who knows? But that's just uh, that's just my style. I really like those uh, sorts of songs. But fight from the inside. It's uh, the first look into sort of disco but rock at the same time, and uh, I think it's a brilliant song. So that rounds out side one, and uh, yeah, it's brilliant. It's you know I think it's fantastic. And to be fair, we enter side two uh, just as good, really. We get Down My Glove, uh, written by Freddie Mercury. Of course, this one was uh, a bit interesting because of its uh, sexual, na uh, sexual nature and overtones. But uh, no, it's it's got that funk. Uh, it, it's very funky as well in terms of its uh, its influence. It's, it's got a lot of funk influences. Um, I'm trying very hard not to uh, slur my words here with uh, funk. There we go. I've said it three times without slurring my words. Now that's an achievement. But, uh, again, it, it's another really good song. It, 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 a lot of these songs are really good lyrically, and uh, I really do like Get Down, Mate, Love. It's, 
not quite as as brash as uh, Sheer Heart attacking its rock nature and its guitar. Uh, but again, I think it's really good. It's uh, obviously it, it repeats Get Down, Mate Love a lot, but uh, I mean, I, not like uh, Freddie Mercury to make a hint. Very subtle character, but uh, I think it's brilliant. You know, it's it's a it's a song that I think would probably be forgotten by Queen a little bit because. Unlike the other ones, it's a little bit controversial, it's a little bit unqueen, I suppose you could say, um, in some ways, but I, I, I do, I, I do really like it. But then after that, I, I think the album starts to go a little bit downhill. I know that uh, some people, are, I've read some reviews that say, oh, this is a fantastic album, one of the best of all time. Uh, and these last four songs I've only listened to today, and uh, I wouldn't say I've not been impressed, but I'd say that they're not the highlight of Queen's Queer. We'll start with Sleeping on the Sidewalk, which was uh, track 8 that was uh, penned by Brian Maynard. It was uh, the first Queen song, and the only Queen song to be recorded in one take, apart from the vocals. It's a very blues-related number, but with Queen, you always expect something special, don't you? You, you, you really expect something. You, you, respect, you expect something that makes you go, wow, with Queen. But I don't think this one does. I think it's... Uh, a bit of a weak one from uh, Brian May, to be quite honest. You have your own opinions. I'd love to know down in the comments if you like this one. But for me, it doesn't really do much for me. And I've listened to it for the first time today. And there's, I have to say, I don't really think there's much taking me back to it. I, I'm just not really a fan, to be honest. And that's a real shame, because the rest of the album so far has moulded itself into being fantastic. And listening to that, I thought, oh, this is a bit of a disappointment now. Uh, then we move on anyway to Who Needs You. Um, this is written by John Deacon. This is definitely highlights, though, that all four members had a good role in the album as well. It's not just uh, Brian May and Freddie Mercury writing the music. Again, uh, Who Needs You, funnily enough, using uh, a bit of like Latin influences, which is uh, quite similar to Innuendo, which is a fantastic song um, from the 1991 album, the same name, which is the last album before Freddie died. But... Again, it, it's it's a good song, you know, it, it's a good song, but I don't think it's any more than that. I've uh, listened to a review, I can't remember what his name is now, but uh, really good, uh, really big uh, Queen fan on YouTube. If you search um, an album review for this album, you'll find him straight away. Um, and he really likes this song, but I can't so I can't really say I, I share the same enthusiasm with him, to be honest. Uh, it's a good song, It's uh, again, it's good lyrically, but he hasn't quite got the jazz for me. I, I keep using that pun, it's dreadful. Uh, but... It hasn't really got it for me. Then we move on to It's Late by uh, Brian May. And again, this is a, quite a decent song. You know, I think that uh, the only poor song on the album, for me anyway, is Sleeping on the Sidewalk. But so uh, I think that these last four songs, Sleeping on the Sidewalk, Who Needs You, uh, It's Late and My Melancholy Blues, I, I to say I'm not really, I'm not too impressed uh, when it comes to these songs. Uh, it, might be, it might be one in the future. I might, I might go back and, and perhaps listen to and, and value a little bit more. I've done that with a lot of music in my time. You know, I've I've listened to it a few times, dismissed it, but I've tried. I really have. I've listened to these songs maybe three or four times tonight, but still not quite getting a lot from it. But it's late. It's quite a cool one, really. It's uh, it, it intends to be sort of free acts almost. In uh, I, I haven't actually shown you the back of this. Apologies. Uh, I think I showed you. The, yeah, I did show you the front side. That's uh, the lyrics from side A. These are the lyrics from side B. With a picture of the band uh, on the bottom. But. Uh, as I said, this one written by uh, Brian May. Uh, it's a good song, to be fair. I think maybe listening to this one a few times, it might become a bit of a highlight of Side B. Um, that doesn't really show Side B to be that fantastic, mind you. But it's basically all about a love affair that's uh, it's on its way out, basically. And, uh, you know, don't tell me that we're through at the end of scene two. And then we have the chorus, it's late and I'm uh, it's driving me so mad, but please don't tell me that it is, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, yeah. As I say, Queen are always good lyrically, and it, it's a good song. And then we go on to My Melancholy Blues, uh, which is the last song on the album, and uh, it's basically, this is all about um, when you've had a night out, if you like, and uh, you're sobering up, and uh, another party's over, and I'm left co uh, cober. <laughs> don't know what I'm on about. And I'm left cold, sober, uh, and my, uh, probably, a link, uh, probably a sort of mishmash between cold and sober there, cold, but there, but there you go. Uh, my baby left me for somebody new. I don't want to talk about it, want to forget about it, want to be intoxicated with that special brew. Good song. I do like My Melancholy Blues. Whether it's a highlight again, not quite sure. Um, but there is a bit of a theme with this album. There's possibly, I think maybe, uh, if we look, I think we've got We Were Rocky, We Are The Champions, Sheer Heart Attack, Spread Your Wings, Fight From The Inside, 
uh, and get down like love that I personally definitely put in the bright greatest hits for Queen. Uh, there's fantastic songs there, but I don't know about the rest. That they're all good songs, but maybe over time uh, it might be something I'm influenced by a little bit more. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but it might take a few more listens. But I wanted to do this now, uh, do this review now. I can't feel where the blooming vinyl goes here, but I'll just I'll just leave it. I don't want to uh, ruin the vinyl record. I'm just going to get the album cover back out for the end of the review uh, but that's an album I think after reviewing all the songs it's a good album it's a good solid album and uh, it follows up a day at the race quite nice and with the most of the songs I'm pretty impressed I have to say I, I, I like a lot of these songs and it epitomises Queen really nicely as uh, the fantastic band that they are and always will be but there are a few songs and maybe they are the last four songs that let the album down a little bit I don't know let me know down in the comments what your views are um but I'm not the biggest fan of uh, those four songs. But apart from that, um, I do really like the album. So that's going to be it for today's review. Uh, I'll probably give the album maybe a 7 out of 10. I wouldn't quite say it's the fantastic, mesmerising album that some people would. Uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get the album, because I, I know you like it when I hold the album. It's, uh, it's not so good when I don't hold the album. But uh, I just mean to get it straight. There we go. But... Um, no, that's it for today's review. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed a bit of an impromptu one. I thought, I fancy doing a review tonight. I thought, I'll do a Queen one. Picked an album at random, which was this one. Uh, I'd already listened to most of it, and I'd picked the last few songs. But as I say, over time, my opinions might change towards those last few songs. I might do another review of the album. Who knows what will come in the future. But for future Queen reviews, rock reviews, top 10s album reviews, all that sort of stuff on a weekly basis, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and those will come on a weekly basis. But for now, that has been a review of News of the World by Queen. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys for the next one. Goodbye.